Yeah. Well, welcome back. Hello. Charlie and... Lauren. Lauren. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so I, I believe that you chose this image, Lauren. So do you want to talk to us about the image and um, how it relates to what inspired you to do the trove? Um, basically, I just think there's something really fragile about the image. There's a real delicacy to it. However, obviously it mixes kind of installation, performance and the mixed media of it. But it's also something about that temporality of it, but having a really dominant presence within the space. I think that's exactly what the Trove plot did. Obviously, there's a transience to it with the time and the changing of it. However, I think when you look down the corridor, it has got a very dominant presence within that space. Um, the children I actually only thought about once I'd chosen it in relation to the cups and everything else that went on in terms of our plot being quite interactive. Um, but I just think it's a really interesting image in space. Do you want to tell us about the starting point then for, for that trove space? I suppose that's a good place to start. You um, really. One of the conversations we had early on as sort of a steering group for allotment was how does the trove plot now become separate to sort of the production of the entire project? So it was really important that trove had its voice that was separate to me. I'm really lucky at the moment that we that at trove we've got a really good, interesting team and Lauren was brought onto that team to be sort of a curatorial trainee so this really is a conversation between Lauren and I but mainly led by Lauren so it's got the extension of Trove in the sense of cabinets and um, that's something that Trove have worked with since since its inception many years ago and it was sort of Lauren's idea to then fill them so the cabinets were designed by the other three Trove Coutiers and then yeah Lauren sort of curated then what went on inside them but things, as far as I can remember, things stayed there, didn't they? So the premise, yeah. what, what was the premise and what was the thinking behind that plot and how that plot would work? It was just that idea of obviously having a starting point but tending to it as if it were an allotment. Um, but this idea that things there would be familiar, so if you'd come past a few times, something would still be there. Um, but just this idea of it growing and developing as a space um, with very different artists in each cabinet that it was. Um, a very different artist that cr like created the, the cabinets as well. Um, but just this idea of as a space through like the course of the project, it would change, but things would still be very familiar. And how, how, how did you work with artists <laughs> and how did you select artists and how did that come about? This was also a part of Lauren learn learning what curating yes. is, <laughs> kind of discovering a way of curating. So it kind of came about through conversations, through talking to Lauren about resources. I know Ellie mentioned earlier about going on Access Web to find Birmingham artists, and that was one of the resources Lauren went on as well to find the artists. And actually, themes came through from the cabinets, so they were really inspired. So Sophie's first cabinet that had the kind of bright paint on, Lauren and I decided that it was perhaps to go down a more playful route, and that's sort of the work that we researched. And then with Kate's second cabinet, the looking through the female holes and this idea of the holes being places for knowledge we went down a very feminine route all the artists are female mm -hmm. and then finally with Dan's periscopes we went back to sort of an element of play and collection and multiple it was almost like each cabinet had its style in itself so as we say Sophie was quite playful and especially with the um, the cups being a part of that at the beginning it was very interactive it's very playful obviously the children then got on board with that one <laughs> Um, as Charlie said with Kate's, it was a very feminine, very delicate, but very respectful, I think. Um, and then with Dan's, it was quite quirky, it was quite contemporary. So throughout the range, even though the cabinets were obviously collected within this space, I think um, it was quite varied. And what did you, what did you learn? <laughs> um, obviously lots. <laughs> yes, obviously. Well, I remember at the very beginning, because I've come from just being an artist, but always been an installation artist, so very interested in curation. And I always feel if you are an installation artist, you have to be aware of that, um, just because of how you construct or try not to construct a space. Um, but I remember sitting down with Charlie at the beginning and going, OK, so if I don't know artists, if I can't contact artists I know, how do I find these two? I just Googled them, like artists in Birmingham. And she's like, there is resources for this, Lauren. Um, so just how to contact artists who, you know, and the difference between artists I knew coming on board and having more of a professional kind of, <coughs> like, relationship with people who I didn't know. Um, so, yeah, I've learned a lot. 
good. <laughs> and tell us about the cups, because the cups kind of... The cups, I mean, because I, I, what was really weird is I, I, I've known milk two sugars for years, and I just thought no one knew who they were. And I saw these cups, and I was thinking, I'm sure... And it, so how did you, how, how, what was that encounter with Milk Two Sugars? Really oddly, actually, Milk Two Sugars were shown in a, in a trove exhibition, those cups, in February 2010, at an off-site project we did at the vaults. And to be honest, I just had two cardboard boxes full of them in my loft still. And when we were thinking about the playful aspect and thinking about how, how you can try to fill the allotment space while there's still only a single cabinet in there, and we thought about bringing aspects onto the floor, the cups actually made sense. What we weren't expecting mm -hmm. is just the amount of play that went on. And they, those cups have been replenished 20 times over and they still look scruffy as, particularly in their new homes of the periscopes, because <laughs> kids are throwing them in. Um, <laughs> I think it's really interesting with Next Generation, you were saying that you were kind of really key, looking really directly at that kind of kid audience. We, we weren't necessarily, we were thinking of the aspect of play and interaction, but we weren't thinking so intensely. I think, especially considering where it is in that main corridor space as well, we obviously knew there was people passing by and a lot of mothers and children here, but I don't know if we took it for granted that people would be like, this is an exhibition, so we don't touch. But then we obviously invited people to touch by how we positioned the cups, how they were, um, but yeah, we didn't quite expect it to go as far as it did. It's been really interesting though, and actually I would say that's been one of the most successful aspects of our plot. Yeah, I agree. In terms of audience participation, people getting involved, and every every single time you go down the plots, they were different. They were sort of stacked to the ceiling, or they were all on the floor, or they'd be having conversations with each other, and then people would write their names underneath faces, and obviously their mates' names <laughs> of who they thought that they looked like, and... You, there was a takeaway element as well, so you could take them away. We didn't necessarily publicise that, but we realised that things were going missing and that was okay. And it was, it just became such a more interactive yeah. space, which is something I don't think we considered, but was a success. Now you have a triple prize, don't you? We do. It's we have. Cool. It's a little sort of trove collection. It's a David Macintosh catalogue. He was an, um, a trove artist that showed with us in 2010. Inside we've got a postcard, modified postcard by Vicky Cull, who's an Ipswich-based artist that showed with us in 2011. And then we have a set section of wallpaper that's up in the allotment plot at the moment, signed by Karen. So we've got 2010-11 and 12. <laughs> and this will be when Thank I you. win now. <laughs> you swap with me. <laughs> no, I'm Three oh six. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Three oh seven. Three oh seven. Is there a three oh seven? Yes. Yay! Yay!